All right, everybody. So in this video, I'm going to string it all together. I'm going to find somebody using our search tool and our database. I'm going to add them to a sequence of phone calls and emails. I'm going to work through those call and email tasks, and I'm going to show you how the whole thing fits into one workflow. Let's dive in. Okay, so I've just come back to the search tab and now I have searched for myself. Here's my name and look, there I am. I'm going to go ahead and select myself and then I can hit sequence and add to existing sequence. And now I can just type in the name of our sequence, marketing agency owner. And from here, I have some choices to make. I can choose to auto assign this email between any number of mailboxes I connected to Apollo to send it out as fast as possible. This matters because sometimes my mailboxes will be at their sending limit. Remember, I set 100 emails a day for each mailbox. So uh, if I want it to go out as quickly as I can, Apollo will just choose which one has some open sends for the day and it'll send the email out. I'm just gonna go ahead and send this from the mailbox that I have connected and I'm gonna hit confirm. Now, Apollo is gonna warn me. Uh, Apollo <laughs> tries not to prospect Apollo people, but I'm gonna say do it anyway and I'm gonna hit save people. Now, if I come back to engage and I go to marketing agency owner, you'll notice that I have to activate my sequence. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and hit activate. As soon as I hit activate, things start moving. Now, if I have a Salesforce account, I can map my stages in Apollo to Salesforce, which is something that we'll cover in a different video. Um, but all you need to know is basically this keeps Apollo and Salesforce synced up so that if a deal progresses in Salesforce, it'll pull those people out of Apollo and we can create all kinds of automation for that if we want. But I just wanna focus on uh, showing you guys exactly how this is gonna work. So I created this sequence, right? and I added myself to it. But now I actually have to do the work associated with that sequence. And I can do that a couple of different ways. The first way is from within this sequence, I can click on tasks and you'll see that I have a task here. But the more likely way you're gonna do this is by coming to home and tasks. And you'll notice that I, if I scroll down, uh, I have this tasks button and I can click tasks and I have a bunch of tasks due for myself. Um, including some emails. So uh, the my now I want to find the task that I just created for myself, right? So I can sort these tasks, task status by due date, descending, and this should have exactly what I was hoping for. This manual email due for me today, and there's a note: add some personalization. So I clicked on this button. And it's got me here uh, in the sequence and my template that I created is right here. Okay. So I can now edit this any way that I want to and go ahead and send that email out uh, either on a, on a schedule or I can send it out uh, right away if I want to. So I'm going to add some personalization here. Now, I highly encourage you guys to go above and beyond when personalizing your emails and do it in a meaningful way. Um, I like to go to somebody's LinkedIn. I like to go to their company website. I like to understand who is my customer's customer. What did they care about? And try and find things that are going to resonate with them to put in the email. I don't want to do things like, hey, Josh, uh, noticed you have you know 3,000 followers, or I noticed you do this or that. I want to say something meaningful. So I'll do my best to do that here. Hey, Josh, I help marketing agencies get their clients ranked in the top three spots on Google. Uh, loved, your, loved your episode on the Predictable Revenue podcast uh, last year. I'm curious, are you looking for any SEO help at this time? So, you know, this is a tried and true method. It's called flattery. Showing somebody that I went and I researched them and I liked something that they made, that's a really good way to get a response from somebody. And I'm gonna go ahead and send this email now. So I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna click this drop down button and hit send now. Now you'll remember that when I created my sequence, I had an email first, a manual email that I personalized. And then the second thing I had was a phone call. So that email has now been sent. And now I have a phone call task I have to make. I have to call myself. So I'll show you how to do that. We're going to come back to the home tab and right back to where we were. Scroll down. We're in tasks. And now we can see we have 12 calls to do. And here I am. If I click on the task, this little uh, bar is going to pop out on the right hand side. And I have this big blue button that I can call myself with. So I'm going to go ahead and hit call. The call would happen. And then I would select what kind of call this was, whether this was a prospecting call or something else. 
and you can set these call purposes up to customize them if you want. And then I would select a disposition, which again is something that you can customize. Uh, so in this instance, I left myself a really nice voicemail. Now, when you are leaving a voicemail, I would recommend keeping it short and sweet and very familiar. In this example, I'd say, hey, Josh, this is Josh, just giving you a call from Apollo. Give me a call back. Um, now I am ready to log my call. So I've gone ahead and sent myself an email. I made myself a phone call. And now if I go back to my sequence, what will happen next is in five days, another email will automatically go out from Apollo. And you'll notice that there, there I am, I'm active in this sequence. Now, uh, a few days after that, there will be a LinkedIn connection request that I can complete via the Chrome extension. What I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to rearrange the order of these steps so I can bring the Chrome extension uh, or the, the, the LinkedIn connection request to the next step, actually. And the way I did that, if you want to see that again, I just clicked on this little hamburger menu or I guess sandwich menu, and I just clicked and dragged this step up. And that put this, uh, it'll give me a dialogue. Do you want to move it from two to four to two? No, I want to move it from four to three and I can hit yes. So what this will do, you'll see I'm no longer active in the automatic email. I'm now active in the LinkedIn connection request step. And to complete that step, I can just come to LinkedIn and the Chrome extension will load on the side and I can click this and I can go to tasks. There's one task to do today and it's me. Uh, but Apollo actually, automatically sent that connection request on my behalf because I'm connected to myself, this broke, but what would happen otherwise is Apollo would automatically send that connection request for me. Now, something to keep in mind is that there is a limit to the number of connection requests that you can send in this fashion on LinkedIn or in any fashion on LinkedIn. So be judicious with the number of connection requests that you're sending. You can also, in, uh, instead of using a connection request, you can change this and you can make this anything you want, right? It can be a message, a profile view, a post interaction. Um, I tend to find that the most effective way to start a relationship on LinkedIn is actually to comment on a post of theirs or to comment on a comment they made on someone else's post to actually start a conversation. That uh, tends to be the most authentic way that I've found to connect with people on LinkedIn. But at this point, we have kind of gone through everything you need to know for how to add people to a sequence. As you start adding more and more people to the sequence, uh, you should get more and more replies. And the one thing I do wanna call out is in the previous video, we built a list and some of the people on our list we had phone numbers for and some of the people we didn't have phone numbers for. This sequence we built requires a phone number. So what we can do now is we can duplicate this sequence by going to more actions and clicking clone. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna duplicate this, but I'm gonna delete the phone call steps because now I can add all of the people who I don't have a phone number for to this sequence. So I can go ahead and turn it on, but I'm gonna just go through and delete the phone step. And so you'll remember that now I can go into search. And now that I'm in search, I can just come over here and I can say, I can uh, select lists. I can say, I want people from the list I made, marketing agency owners. And I can scroll down to more filters and I can go to phone status slash confidence. So now I can apply this filter and I wanna say, yes, if, give me everybody from that list who has a phone number and who has a mo whose number is a mobile number. So you'll notice there are 110 people with a phone number. That's the whole list. We have a number for everybody, but we don't have a mobile number for everybody. We have a, a work number or a corporate number or a home number or something else. And if I'm doing cold calls, I really want to call people with a mobile number um, and whose number is valid. So that I have 74 of those. So I'm going to take those people, these 74, and I'm going to add them to the sequence with the call step, right? So I'm going to select all of them and now I can add them to sequence, add to existing sequence and marketing agency owner. Nope, not no calls. I want marketing agency owner. This is the one with calls. Okay. And I can hit add now that's going to add all 74 people. Um, to the sequence. So now this is giving me a dialogue and you'll see this a lot. Do you want to add the following contacts from your other sequences? Click, click each checkbox to add a group of contacts. So I can add a couple people from the same company and I can add somebody with a verified email. Uh, I just want to go ahead and sequence uh, the people that I had selected. But remember I had 110 people in my list total. So what I can do now is I can come back to more filters 
and I can look for some uh, the people who I've already added to the sequence. So I'll get rid of the, the mobile number rather. And what I'm going to look for is sequence. And I'm going to say exclude contacts in any sequences above. And I'm going to say marketing agency owner. So I just added everybody with a mobile number into my call sequence. And now I'm going to make sure that I only get people who are not in that sequence. And I'm going to hit apply now. This gives me the remaining 39 people. So I can go ahead and select all of those people. I'm going to add them to a sequence with no phone calls. Okay. And in this way, I built myself a 110 person list. I got everybody with a phone number and I put them in a call, uh, a sequence with calls. I got everybody with no phone number, put them in a sequence without calls. And now I can just work from my home uh, control center and work through my tasks methodically, you know, every day over the next couple of days until I've exhausted that list. Then I can come back to search and repeat the process again. I can apply my persona because I already built that and I can just, you know, find new people. Apollo is constantly updating its database of new people and I can continue this process. Okay, so even though we've covered a lot of ground in these videos in terms of how to use Apollo, we've still barely scratched the surface. There's just a lot that this platform can do. So don't forget to go to knowledge.apollo.io to check out the knowledge base, to click around in the platform, and to head to apollo.io and click on the resources tab, where we're constantly producing new content like this to help you get more from the Apollo platform. I'm Josh Garrison. Thank you for spending your time with me today, and I'll see you next time.